Hey guys, what is going on? Welcome back to another video here on the channel. In this video, we're gonna be covering three battery chemistries that all come from the same lithium family. We're gonna talk about their high level specifications and where you can possibly use these battery packs. Three examples all come from the lithium family and that is going to be our lipo battery pack, our light ion battery pack, and lastly, our lifey battery pack or liffy depending on how you wish to pronounce it. Let's first kick things off by talking about the voltages of each one of these battery packs. Our LiPo battery pack has a nominal voltage of 3.70 volts, where our Li-Ion battery pack has a nominal voltage of 3.6, and our LiFi battery pack has a nominal voltage of 3.30 volts. You can see that already here, there's a major advantage for the lithium polymer battery pack because it has a higher nominal voltage. All these voltages are per cell. So when you go and multiply these voltages by the total amount of cells that you have in a battery pack, you can get a much higher voltage out of our lithium polymer battery pack without the need for a high cell count. Let's talk about the second value that we have here up on the board and that is our maximum voltages for every cell. Right here you can see that there are some differences there between each one of the battery chemistries and the biggest thing to focus on is the difference between the maximum as well as your nominal voltage. For the first two battery chemistries, we have about 0.5 volts difference for every cell that you have within that battery pack. However, our LIFI battery pack only has a difference of 0.3 volts. This is going to suggest to us that during the course of the battery's life from 100% state of charge down to 20% state of charge, we are going to see lesser of a voltage drop within our LIFE battery pack. So when it comes to the difference between maximum versus nominal, this definitely takes the cake. Now when it comes to the third specification, this is the absolute minimum voltage here that we have on the board. You absolutely wanna make certain that you never actually hit the values that are written on the board in green. Three volts for our LiPo, three volts for our lithium ion, and 2.5 volts for our LIFE. If you happen to hit these voltage with these battery packs, you can be certain that the lifespan of that battery pack in terms of how many years you're going to have that battery pack around is going to degrade, it's going to decrease. You want to make sure that we have a drop dead minimum of around 3.4 volts per cell for the first two battery chemistries and 3.00 for our last battery chemistry. Now when we talk about the next item that we have up here on the board, this is the maximum capacity that we want to discharge from a specific battery pack. If we have a 5,000 milliamp hour battery pack and we only want to discharge 80% of that capacity, that is going to be equal to 4,000 milliamp hour. The remaining state of charge is going to be 1,000 milliamp hour in our 5,000 milliamp hour battery pack. So this is something to think about when you are using these batteries and it's going to aid when especially when we talk about lifespan of the packs this is what gets you maximum life by making sure that you follow this rule luckily enough for us it's going to be equal for all the lithium based family that we're talking about here today now let's talk about the typical use for each one of these battery chemistries as it would apply in our RC world so when we first start out by talking about our LiPo battery pack, you would typically see one of these battery packs used in high output power systems. The big advantage of a LiPo battery pack is that it can dump a ton of power out, especially for its size and its weight. This makes it perfect for those high output scenarios where we need to deliver lots of current. Specifically what we're talking about here is the rate at which we're able to discharge that battery pack, which is going to be equal to the amount of current that we can actually get out of a LiPo battery pack. When you're talking about your lithium ion battery, this is gonna be where you have applications within RC that is of slow drain. We're talking again about current here. This typical example is an RX, a TX. This is our receiver battery pack or a transmitter battery pack. Even if you want to run some LED lights on board or even a sound card on board, any one of these examples and you could easily get away with using a lithium ion cell. Now, even some long range radio controlled airplanes or drones use and can get away with using this specific battery pack. 
Now the last item that we do have up on the board here is our Lifey. This is used in multiple different locations, especially with larger radio control vehicles. We can see these battery packs being used in transmitters as well as receivers and even ignition systems or turbine ECUs. A nice thing about the Lifey battery cell is that it has a nominal voltage of 3.3 volts, which actually makes it ideal for RX applications. I can use this battery chemistry for all of my six volt nominal servos and it will work without any issue. The total voltage that we get out of that battery pack can be 7.2 volts, but as soon as you pull it off the charger and start to use it, it drops very quickly down to that 3.3 volt nominal value. And as such, we are going to be able to use it for our RX without the need or requirement of a voltage regulator. This is the ideal situation, especially when it comes to our receiver there. So now I wanted to talk about special characteristics. Now this is primarily for the Lifey battery pack. However, let's talk about some of them for our LiPo and Li-Ion. Typical cells you will see in a lithium polymer battery pack will come in this rectangular shape. This is an example of what a 3S battery pack would be. And you can tell that because you can see three layers of cells stacked on each other. This type of cell is very easily damaged in any type of radio control vehicle crash. Just something to keep in mind if you are flying a radio control airplane or you're jumping one of your radio control cars. If that battery pack comes flying out and hits the ground, it is more than likely going to be permanently damaged physically in some way, shape or form. Now for our lithium ion battery pack, this typically comes in a cylindrical shape cell. A common configuration is the 18650. What you see up on the board here is just a singular cell, one cell of a lithium ion. Now for our last one, the whole reason why I put this special characteristics here is because of this specific battery chemistry. The resting voltage, if you were to look at a resting voltage anywhere between 20 and 80% of the battery capacity on board, you are going to see a relatively constant voltage. This is something that blows my mind because you do not typically see this with any battery chemistry. The resting voltage of a battery pack, in my experience, for a lifey battery is not something that I would use to actually determine what its state of charge is. It is common for me to go and utilize the milliamp hour of usage for this battery pack so that I can get an understanding as to where I am within the state of charge for that battery. Now let's talk about the lifespan of our battery packs. Our LiPo battery pack here is ranked in last place three out of three because it does perform the weakest when we're talking about the lifespan of our battery pack. A great example would be an electric ducted fan jet. Typically from batteries, I get about two or three years of the battery pack before I would have to go and purchase a new one for our electric ducted fan jets. And the reason is I'm not gonna get the same performance when new from that battery pack for my electric powered jet. And as a result, I cannot fly it with such a reduced amount of performance. Now let's talk about the rank for our lithium ion. This actually has the highest amount of lifespan. You can get a significant amount of years out of a Li ion cell. This is by far one of the top advantages of a lithium ion battery pack. The lifespan of these are significant. And finally, our last one here is going to be the Lifey battery pack coming in on the rank between these three battery packs as number two. So these have a good lifespan. They're somewhere in between our LiPo and our lithium ion pack. Now let's talk about the last item that we have here up on the board and that is going to be maintenance. Now all three of these battery pack chemistries require us to maintain them in order to maximize lifespan. A better word to describe exactly what we're going to talk about here may actually be the damage due to abuse. The damage due to abuse for not maintaining your LiPo battery pack is going to be quite high relative to the damage from abuse if you don't maintain your LiFi battery pack. That is going to be relatively low. However, at the end of the day, if you want to maximize the amount of lifespan that you get from any one of these battery chemistries, you have to apply all of the typical rules that we've mentioned in previous videos. Well guys, that pretty well sums it up for these three battery chemistries that we're looking at today. I hope you enjoyed the video. Like the video if you do. Don't forget to hit that sub button so that I can see you in the next video. 
Thanks a lot for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.